Now, today is going to be a big day. A big day, I say, because we are going to be getting ourselves creative flight. Or at least some sort, some form of creative flight, right? Um, I'm gonna be hunting down the angel ring. Now, the angel ring in the in the past was a, a really interesting part of extra utilities. And uh, it, it had a interesting progression to get to it. Of course, there was a slime ring, or, or I believe it wasn't a slime ring. It was a, a squid ring, which was fantastic. It allowed you to sort of hover with uh, so much of the uh, the sort of grid power that you had. But in this pack, we do have a angel ring replacement. And uh, let's pop into this ring right here. So first of all, we have a diamond ring. I'm not quite sure what this does unless it just gives you uh, a Lytra flight like a slot to equip just a Lytra Flight. That'd be kind of cool. Um, and then you have the Angel Ring, which this consumes the player's XP while flying. So it says if the player reaches less than level one XP, the magic will disappear and the flight will no longer be possible. That's very interesting. Also, as you can see, kind of expensive, but this is unobtainium blocks, right? We've had bees producing unobtainium this whole time we've been adventuring, which is uh, pretty nice. So we should have all of that. Now, the one that I want to get is going to be the energetic angel ring. This one's going to use RF, and we may have to prioritize RF production to be able to sustain this thing. That's the only concern is how much power is that actually going to cost? And well, we're going to find out once we go to the end and get ourselves another elytra, because that is what's going to start this entire process. So today might end up being angel ring hunting, angel ring crafting, and then potentially the power mod. Now, of course, first things first, we need to get ourselves an elytra, and this was a lot easier than I was anticipating. Uh, yeah, there should be one right here. Boop. Get wrecked, dude, get wrecked. And there's our elytra, and we can actually make a duplicate of this, which is something I'm also going to do. Also, what was this? This is orbit, launch, amplify, delay, knockback, and then more amplify? Ooh, this is the orbit spell that we will get in our next tier, which is something I'm going to be working on soon. That once we are able to upgrade our spell book to our next tier, this is the last tier, by the way. And uh, once we have that, things are going to get really spicy. Um, okay, so I am going to go ahead and let's set this to, I think our ranged break spell has, yeah, a pickup item. Will it work? Perfect. Um, I don't know where it went. Into our backpack. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness. Woo, I was wondering if that was going to go there. That's going to be really helpful when we go hunting these things later on. Now, you all may be wondering, why do I want creative flight? And, well, some of you will definitely know why I want creative flight. For building. Um, that is the only real thing that I, I personally enjoy the creative flight for. I love the Elytra flight. Like, this is perfect for exploring. Elytra is fantastic. But just for creative building, just for build, being able to build at a whim incredibly fast in my style, I love, I love having some sort of creative flight, which is going to make this castle really just sort of blow up. I have big plans for this, and so I need this to do it. Um, otherwise, it's going to take me a lot longer because I'll have to use scaffolding and all kinds of other parts of Minecraft that I may or may not enjoy, may or may not enjoy. Um, so, if you have an elytra, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, elytra. Right, it's in my bag, uh, of course. If you have an elytra and you've killed the dragon more than once, if you kill the dragon the second time and then the, the times after that, um, you're actually able to make duplicate elytras. Um, so, in this case, I can make a copy so long as I have one of the dragon uh, scales. I uh, believe it is a dragon scale. Yes, from Quark. And so you'll get the dragon scale. I don't know if it's 100% guaranteed every time, but when you do get it from killing the dragon like a second or third time, you'll be able to craft uh, a second elytra from your main, which is really helpful, especially when there's tons of recipes that incorporate this, such as the thing I wanted to make last time, but I can't because I've never found soul dust, of course, last episode, but there's all kinds of other mods in here that utilize these to make really cool looking elytras, or they're used in recipes and other things like that. So, now that we have this, a beautiful Elytra. All right, I want to make, or try to make the angel ring. Will I be able to? I don't know. I suppose I spelled angel ring wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can make this. So, blocks of netherite, 
blocks of diamond. I should have just about everything needed for this. Ooh, I hope. If not, we're going to go on a mining expedition because I have to find this stuff. And let's see. Last but not least, a bunch of unobtainium. Oh boy, I don't know unless we already have some available. We may be stuck. Oh, I do have I do have some. Okay. So, let's try this again. Ring. Let's first make the starter one. We need a block of each. And I hope we can get this. I, I'm assuming this is going to be like a sort of elytra flight. It has to be elytra flight, right? Guaranteed. It may not do anything, though. That's, that's another thing I was concerned about. Like, does this do anything on this base tier? There we go. And I think that's everything. Boop. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our chess piece off because that gives us a lighter flight. So yeah, I, I don't think this ring does anything on its own. Even though it would be really cool if it did give you a lighter flight since you did cr it did take an elytra to craft said thing. Um, okay, that's interesting. And I don't think you have to activate it or anything, right? Nope. So you can't do anything with the based ring. Good to know. Good to know. Now, to make the next tier requires probably more unobtainium than I have. No, that's actually, I have enough. Now, this is probably going to be a problem. I'm going to need two Olamodium furnaces. I know I have a bunch of Olamodium, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I just have to go through the recipe. Oh, thankfully, this recipe is not that bad. Oh, no, I do. I have to go through all of the recipes. Now, for the furnace crafting, it's probably almost better to just have all of the furnaces on auto craft. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be way easier to do it that way. And as you can see, that was several different inputs into <laughs> this thing. Oh my goodness. Yep, that's uh, that's a lot. I love how it says it's pointing to the Starlight Crusher Trophy or Star uh, Starlight Crusher Cho Trophy. Um, I don't think that's going to cause any problems. I do like that it points to it, though. Um, okay, so maybe I'll be able to craft it? I don't know. All, all the modium. I have 253. It's going to take a lot to craft this, so... Uh, all the modium, and I'm not seeing the furnace... Oh, did I, I don't think I actually made the recipe for the furnace itself. Um, okay, so we get to do that together. We're going to make the all the modium furnace at, on craft, just like that. Put that in there, and then it should pull up. So I need two of these. Do I have enough? I am apparently missing two furnaces. I thought I made the crafting recipe for the furnace, but it's, uh, it's kind of unfortunate how the furnaces work. Because, yeah, the deep slate furnace and then this furnace, I need just cobble. <laughs> and, like, when you have conflicting recipes like that, it's it kind of confuses some systems. Okay. All the mod, let's make two. It looked like we were fine. Oh my gosh, are we going to be able to craft this today? That's crazy. Okay. So I am going to most likely get creative flight today. I am excited. Now, I need two nether stars. Well, we are going to need to kill the Wither, and we can actually do that here in our base. Or actually, we, you know, we don't even need to kill the Wither. Now that I think about it, we have 5,000 of these overworld predictions. Um, and we can actually make nether stars. We can craft nether stars, I believe. Uh, yeah, with a loot fabricator, we can get them. But I, I'm almost positive that we can craft them in other ways. Or do they remove that? Hmm. Yes, it definitely looks like that recipe was changed <laughs> in some form, uh, which is kind of interesting. But we should be able to get this set up. And I'm thinking about using the underneath part down here. Uh, eventually, I'll be able to get down here uh, to sort of finish this out. But uh, for right now, let's go ahead and place down some wither proof blocks. Yes, there are wither proof blocks. And honestly, we've been using them this entire time, right? It's called Tinted Glass from Mob Grinding Utils. Super easy to make. Been right under your nose the entire time. And all you have to do is just set up a little wither box. And killing the wither 
should be pretty darn easy. Now to get the wither into the center of the room here, I kind of like to set up this. If you're gonna be building a three by three room, um, I like to put the wither on its side, just to sort of guarantee that it's going to go in the direction I want it to, and not just fly out of this thing, which it, uh, it could potentially do. So once you get it set in, if you just wanna protect the ground, just go ahead and do that. Stand back a little bit, because you are going to take some damage. Of course, with our gear, we're going to be fine. The wither will explode. Oh, okay. Well, that was not intended. Um, It should not be able to go up in my base and break my blocks. Okay, Um, apparently it can. Don't do this in your base. Don't, don't do this. Okay, that was not, okay. Why? Why? Why must you? Why must you do this? Okay. Yeah, this is bad. This is bad. Oh my god. I don't even know what to do. Let's get him away from here. Maybe it'll follow me. Go. Let's go this way, bub. Um, because right now, this is not good. This is uh, this is bad. Very bad. Okay. Holy smokes. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> it escaped out of the thing. Um, that was not good. That was not good at all. Now to assess the damages. And I'm kind of surprised it didn't break any of the modded blocks here. Um, or my pipes, it just, it just broke a, a couple of regular blocks from Hexerai. I have no idea what happened. I had a roof. Okay, so I, I'm not quite sure, but these are supposed to be witherproof, but it, it did get out of here. And this is one of the issues with, uh, building it this small, I guess, <laughs> is... It can still get out. Um, maybe I need to build it one more higher. I feel like that's probably the case. And I'm honestly horrified now to test again because of its ability to get out. But I, I'll do it just for science, for science. This time I'm going to build it up normally, how most people would probably build it. And maybe it won't be able to fly up and through the roof again. Okay, yeah, no, this time, that's more like it. Okay. <laughs> um, very interesting. Very interesting. I mean, honestly, in situations like that, you kind of just have to stay as calm as you possibly can because, I mean, I was expecting the worst. I was honestly expecting everything here to die. Oh, no. Wolfie. Wolfie's gone. Oh. Wolfie died. Um, I don't, I don't think, um, I, I don't think there's a way to get Wolfie back at this point. Um, is there? I don't think there is. Oh man. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to find a new dog. Well, with the loss of our dog looming, it's time to now make the angel ring. And I believe I have everything for the angel ring now. And so this is supposed to... When equipped, I, oh, oh, it goes in the rings. Oh, so I wonder if the other one could be equipped into the ring slot. Oh, I guess it may, it didn't actually say angel ring slot. So this consumes experience. Okay, at an interesting rate. And it's very quick, very quick, but not exactly what I'm wanting. I am wanting the power. Um, not sure either how much power this is going to consume. Hopefully it's not too crazy, too, too crazy. But the recipe for this, is fairly nice. Now they're, oh, okay. So I guess the rates are going to be different because it does look like once you go energetic angel ring, then you can take, wait, there's a lead ring as well. Are there different tiers here? What is going on? Oh, this can go hardened and then reinforced resonant. That, that would be the route, right? That's thermal and then this, is just energetic. 
I don't know if there is a difference. Should go should I go this route? Or this route? Hmm. So after killing the wither two more times and giving this some thought while doing so, I think that uh, it may be in my best interest to go this route with the upgradable version versus just going the energetic. I'm not quite sure what this particular one does. Um, if it gives you base, that'd be fine. But this one maybe maybe may allow me to kind of choose how fast I can actually fly with it, um, which could be interesting. So I'm thinking about going here, even if this is very slow, it doesn't bother me just so I can have some sort of creative flight to be able to build with. That's really the only thing I want this for. So uh, I think I have just about everything to be able to upgrade it to this. Do I have Cinnabar? Of course I do. Do I have lead? Of course I do. And everything else. Um, a hardened component I may not have. Definitely have this. Um, and let's see. Can I make this? I can. Okay. So there we go. We now have a leadstone angel ring. Now, it doesn't look like it's being charged. Okay, there it goes. That's because it's in my main inventory. But apparently I can equip this. It is being charged. Okay, and I can just fly. Like, it's this is like regular standard creative flight. So I'm wondering, does the upgrades... Re, uh, make it more efficient to fly maybe that's the case where it'll make it more efficient to fly or reduce the overall cost i don't i don't actually know give us more speed who knows who knows i'll uh we'll have to figure that out over time even though right now i don't have a great uh judge of how much rf we're using um i can judge it maybe here by taking a look at our controller and it looks like we're using a thousand rf our flux controller is dropping a thousand RF every now and then. Um, I can, so if I go here and I take a look at my network statistics, we might be able to get a good judge because this is how much power we are currently averaging use. So our output is about 2000. It looks like it peaks at 2000 some odd. Now while I'm flying, what is this equal? So yeah, it is, it is definitely consuming power surge. That's not going to matter. It looks like about a thousand RF per tick to fly. Is what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of gauging here. Somewhere, somewhere close to that. Somewhere close to a thousand RF per tick to fly with this base ring right here. Very interesting. Very, very cool. I almost forgot to mention this because I know a lot of you guys mentioned it in the comments, which thank you guys, by the way, for commenting. Absolutely love reading your comments. But a lot of you let me know that uh, last episode... This guy was inside of my imprisonment tool the entire time, and my goofy self forgot to uh, to release it, and so I couldn't capture anything. And I I did realize this after the episode when I was like just right clicking the ground with it, and then this guy popped out, and I was like, oh yeah, I did pick up a crystal camel from Blue Skies because I absolutely love this mob. Oh, but it's it's probably gonna run away. I don't I don't know where to put it just yet. Uh, without it's it's definitely going to run away from me, but it'll be released for now. And uh, well, what shall we do next? Now I know I mentioned power at the beginning of the episode, and I think that is going to be something that I definitely work on soon. But before then, um, I'm going to have to build a structure or find a place to put it, and I think this area is going to end up becoming the area where I set power up. Skeleton, do you really want to? I'm basically a god right now. Do you okay, well, you asked for it. I gave it to you. Okay, well, <laughs> this area is going to be uh, where I have this all set up. So, um, might as well get to building and sort of build myself a sort of towerish thing. Yeah, a tower of power. The pow the tower of power. That's what it's going to be. So at this point, I almost have this tower done. I've got a little bit more to go. And yes, this is going to be a pretty decent amount of space, at least to get the automation portion of this mod up and running. Um, so yeah, I should be able to fit most of uh, the automation inside of here. But 
the roof roofs are always so difficult right they're always kind of a pain to set up and uh, of course you get the same thing setting on all sides this roof uh, i did all by hand and i can tell you yes it is kind of a pain and there's probably mistakes and that that just happens but we can avoid that by utilizing the building gadget and this is the copy paste tool from building gadgets and uh, i should be able to set this to the copy mode and then i click here and then click here or shift click and shift click on the other side there we go and now this is technically copied um but i don't want this in the copy so i remove that and then i just go back to the paste mode and then go back to the copy and then that should be recopied definitely okay so this is copied here um and i i want this to be placed over here and i want to have uh, this exact thing copied um now to do that i'm gonna have to rotate everything so let's put this in paste mode and unfortunately we can't really see a whole lot going on um i do know that my anchor point is kind of in a weird spot so as you can see right here i i don't know why this has done that but as you can see this is the direction that i've copied it in so why would it be over here i have no idea but i can rotate this and this little corner here should be where the paste happens. Um, so I'm going to have to break this block. And if, if it does fail, we can always try again. So it looked like that worked and it did end up pasting, unfortunately. It did end up pasting my mistake for one over here. This is a mistake. Boop. And it still copied the top. All right. Well, at least it worked, though. Um, and I should be able to repeat this all the way around. So if I go ahead and break this one and then this one, and then I just rotate. Let's hope that it makes it easy on the rotation. Okay, so it doesn't make this the easiest. As you can see, it's wanting to apply this all the way over here. So to change the direction, we all we have to do is look at the block we're looking at or want the, it to be placed in. And then we hold shift. And then we can make our adjustments here. So I need to pull this all the way back here and then confirm and then now right click. And then it was able to be placed in. How simple is that? So yeah, if the, if the building gadget and the pace gadget is daunting to you, keep in mind, you can easily manipulate things. Um, and yeah, and even if you build something really cool, you can copy this and share it with others. And I've gone over this before, but with the building gadgets, let me see, with the building gadgets, um, you take the template manager and it may be a little confusing at first, but if you place paper inside the template manager along with your actual gadget, so let's go ahead and make one real quick, and paper, and you build something and you copy it and you want to save it for later, um, in your world or even copy it over into another world, which is really really cool you place it on your template manager You can name it And for example, this one will be roof place your paper here and then your copy paste gadget and hit save That's gonna save the template and this template is gonna be called roof and at any time you want to just load it You just hit load and that is going to load this template onto here now This is where the cool part happens if you have some paper, right? For example, this template right here, I can click copy. All that did was it copied all of the information off of this. I think you can, you can do it here. Um, so yeah, copy to clipboard. It has to be off of your gadget. And all I have to do, I believe, is hit paste and bam, that's applied as well. So this is how you get code off the internet for this. Um, there's a Reddit, I believe Direwolf has a Reddit for this and all kinds of stuff, and you can load all kinds of cool things. It's, it's really fantastic once you get into it, but it really does help in situations like this where I just wanted to build a roof. So I must say, roof is coming along nicely. Now, I chose this particular color roof because I did the opposite over here, um, and I was still thinking of potentially using the, uh, the willow on this as well, and I might still do that. Um, just because I've used this material doesn't mean I can't use the exchanging gadget, to exchange it out for the willow logs. And I'm probably going to do that. Um, similarly to keep the theme of having Hexerai blocks in our build. Yep, I definitely think exchanging this is a good idea. 
It's going to look so much better once it's exchanged. Yeah. I think fitting the theme a whole lot more. Yeah. It'll be kind of the inverse of what's going on over here. And uh, I think, let's see, I do, I, I to get the uh, blocks going in the proper direction, for example, this right here, I have to make sure that I select the blocks going in the right direction. So even for this sidewall, I'm going to have to make sure to do this. And there we go. This is what this is going to look like. It's a little bit better. And I'm also going to finish up the inside here, um, making sure the interior looks the same and the floor is going to be changed as well. So I think at this point, it looks pretty darn good. Let's take a look at it. So from up here, I got everything sort of exchanged, added a little bit of details. There's still things I'm missing, like the glass, which I still haven't put in, honestly, everywhere. Um, but yeah, down here, there's, there's an entrance to get down here, but I haven't really put an entrance there. I'm thinking of putting like a false stairwell up here just where it looks like there's a stairwell going up, even though I'm not really going to be using this to get up here. Um, the way I'm going to get up there is by using this. So I can just right click to get up here into our power area where, believe it or not, this should be enough space to automate power. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of space to do it. Now, with all of this done today, I think uh, I think we're going to be ready to get into power next episode. So next episode, be prepared. Power is coming. And the, the reason why we need to get into power is because it is probably going to be one of the better ways of generating a significant amount of power in this pack. Uh, aside from bigger reactors, which bigger reactors I've done so much in the past, absolutely love the mod, but bigger reactors we might touch on later on. I, I still think power is one of the best and easiest ways to generate power in this pack. And well, guys, with all of that being said, I want to give a huge shout out to the supporter of today's video. And I'm now going to start putting it on the builds, I guess. So, a huge thanks going out to Kenny. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, supporting me in one of the best ways possible. And that is through the Discord with premium subscriptions over there. Now, you don't need to be a premium subscriber to be a part of the Discord, as we do have a fantastic Discord. It just grants you some really awesome perks, like sub servers and all kinds of cool things. So be sure to check that out. And of course, guys, if you're interested, it's at discord.gg forward slash chosen architect is where you can join. And of course, guys, I'd love to see you there. Also, while you're checking that out, be sure to look at my Twitch. It is twitch.tv forward slash chosen architect, where I do a live stream four days a week. So I would love to see you over there. So if you're watching here and you have that time, be sure to check that out. I do have a second channel also called Chosen Live, where if you do miss the live streams and you want to catch up on all of the past broadcasts, they are all archived over there. So I'd love for you to subscribe to that channel if you would. And of course, guys, subscribe to this one. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you enjoyed something or you just want to roast me nice down in the comments. I appreciate it either way. Thank you so much. And as always, thanks for watching.